Welcome to Tower Gardening Made Easy, and I'm Sherry. If you're new here, be sure to tap that button below and continue to grow our community. Well, if you're staying up to date with the channel, then you know that someone has challenged me to do a pumpkin tower. And I say, let's do it. So you're going to want to stay tuned for this one. Welcome back. So as you can see right behind me, I have a nice cleaned out tower ready to go and the seeds arrived. So I wanted to post this video as close to June 1st as possible because it takes 120 days from seed to harvest. So basically it's October 1st. Let's see if I can do this. So the first step is um, I got the, the tower ready. I actually have water in here. Now it's just, it's not sitting. I actually have the pump going and basically it's just letting any resin from our public water, city water, if you want to call it, um, basically fade away. So I'm not going to add any nutrients or pH to the water until these guys are ready to go in, but it's ready to go. And it's just being cycled just like the other towers in the room. But the first step is to get our seeds, which are you guys ready? They're super cute. They're called We Be Little. I mean, it doesn't get cuter than that. Now, these are not the little teeny tiny ornamental pumpkins, not the ones that are like considered gourds. These are an actual pumpkin. It's the smaller size. It's like that little sugar size. And um, that's the variety that I bought. Now, these seeds will be located in the website uh, at TowerGardeningMadeEasy.com under my favorite seed section. And I've actually done something very special. When you go to the home page, look for the sign that says pumpkin challenge. When you click on that, it's going to take you to the pumpkin challenge page where I'm going to be posting all of the videos from start to finish, any little special comments and um, things that are happening within the challenge that I can't do on YouTube. Or maybe I can, maybe I'll put them in both places. I will also be building a playlist in um, YouTube so that you can click on that and stay up to date as well. But the, the website actually will be easier for you. And there'll be extras there. So you be sure to check it out. And if there's any special equipment that I need during this process, it'll be in the nursery, um, you know, kind of area in on the website. So be sure to check that out too. So the first step right now is we got to go over to the nursery and we got to get these planted. So I'm only going to be planting um, 20. Okay. I'm going to be doing from top to bottom. I'm going to leave the baby green section alone. I'll probably be putting some lettuce and other things in there, uh, just to use up the section and not have it be empty because it promotes algae. Uh, so we don't want that. We don't want anything to be in the water that doesn't need to be, uh, to, to harm the pumpkins. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plant 25 seeds just to make sure that we have a few extra, uh, in case something doesn't make it in the germination phase but we're gonna be using that special technique of how to expedite the growth on these. Because remember, we only have 120 days. So let's go do that now. Hey, welcome to the nursery, guys. It sure has been a hot minute since we planted out some stuff. So here we go. We need to put 25 rock wall. I'm going to be using the Tower Garden um, variety of the rock wall because it's a little bit softer and I think the roots are gonna penetrate it faster and we can get these guys into the tower. However, what I will have to do when I go in is uh, break up some pieces and put a more of a support system on top. I'm going to be doing a video. I keep saying that about the different kinds of rock wall and what you should be using for different kinds of seeds. Um, I will get to that, I promise. But let's get back to this. So I need 25 in this tray. And it's already pre-soaked and rinsed. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in. And these guys actually, um, they pop in faster because you don't have to trim the bottoms. That's another one of the things with the um, this specific rock wall that I use, but not as much as the tower guard. So we'll just pop these in. The one thing while I'm doing this, I wanted to mention about growing pumpkins. When I was doing a little bit of research, I realized when I was looking at the pH and the, um, the nutrients, this is crazy. So the pH for pumpkins is anywhere between 5.5 and 7.5. So pretty much you can do whatever you want. Now the nutrients is between 1.8 and 2.4, which is pretty standard, I think, for kind of a squash. So um, I just was floored by the pH, meaning like this, it kind of made me scared because I'm thinking this is going to be like a super grower. And, you know, it's it's a big 
big seed. So um, yeah, so it's probably going to be very aggressive. So what do we got here? One, two, three, four. Yeah. I always want to plant a little bit more than you need, just in case. The other thing that um, we're going to do after this is I'm going to I'm going to go upstairs. There's a couple of videos that I want to watch with you guys. It's really informational. And there's one thing that I learned, um, and we'll go through it in a second, about growing this type, like pumpkins, uh, summer squash, zucchini, even maybe not melons because that is a different kind of vine, but anything that has those big, big leaves. And we'll get into that in a second. I was a little, I won't say shocked, but I was taken back by, and it just makes sense. We'll watch it in a minute. Make sure you stay to the end. So what do we got? One, two, three, four, and five. Let's do a couple more. So I got 25. I'm going to just wipe my hands. Now, here is the, um, what I love to do with the big seeds. Now we know like cucumbers, they, they sprout really fast and get that root system going. Um, but again, we only have 121 days. So what I did is I pre-cut these. Remember I've done that before where you just take that little seed and you just snip off the end. Well, what this does is it opens the seed. And so we know that these are already pre-soaked and they're ready to go. They're nice and wet, but it allows the moisture from the rock wall to penetrate the seed just a little bit faster. So we're going to go ahead. I'm only going to do one per rock wall. Um, I just have a feeling that these guys are going to be big. Part of me is a little nervous on this challenge, but and listen, I love a good challenge. I think it's great. Um, I'm, I'm already thinking of like what I can do with the extra pumpkin, um, but whether it be making breads or um, sauce or, you know, even um, Libby likes a little bit of pumpkin. It's actually very good for her. It's good for us too. Good source of fiber. And it's perfect because hopefully we'll have a few pumpkins and it will be October 1st. And I keep telling myself like, don't rush summer because the summers here in the New England area are so short. Oh my gosh. So short. We've been on a rainy stretch for the past four or five days and it's just been so, so gloomy. You know, I just, I want spring in the worst way, you know, or summer where, I mean, we're past Memorial Day. So, you know, bring on the sun, bring on the barbecues, bring on the boating. And I want to ride my bike, you know, just, just be outside. You know, it's, we've been cooped up for so long. I want to be able to go out and do my cardio outside and not in the gym. Good. So here we go. Just a couple more guys. We're just popping them in flat. Oh, that one's not flat. He's vertical. We don't want that one flat. So the videos that I found, oops, there's two. We're going to get that one out um, that I found that we're going to watch in a minute. Oh my God. They're hilarious. Hilarious. But they've, they've got a good point. So, all right. So they're all in. So now I just need a scotch of vermiculite on top. And then we know the rule. We know the next step. So let me get rid of this. I'm going to drain off this water. And then those cubes can go in my recycle bin. We all know how important that recycle bin is. It comes in handy. You've seen me in the videos trying to prop things up and get them a little more steady. That's what those pieces are for. Don't throw them out. All right, vermiculite. I've been doing this now for a little bit. And I've just discovered on the back side of this little tool that you get with the um, that little greenhouse that you can you know purchase when you go on my site, it takes you to Amazon. The back side of this is like a spoon because I don't like putting my fingers in the vermiculite because it sticks because they're wet. And then I discovered like it has a scooping mechanism. So I'm like, oh my God, hello. All right, so I'm going to be pretty generous with this. Um, it's a big seed. It can handle it. You don't want to put a whole lot of vermiculite on a, a small seedling like um, a strawberry. Uh, celery is a small seed. Some of the lettuce seeds are real small. All you need is a little, just a little pinch. But I just want to make sure these guys um, stay nice and moist because tick, tick, tick. The clock is ticking, man. I got to get these in there. I'm really hoping we can get them in there within the next 
five to seven days. So I'm going to be updating um, the seeds. I'll take some pictures and go ahead and post them in the post area. Um, maybe make a, you know, a video, but I'm hoping for the next video to be that we actually put them in the tower and say a prayer <laughs> that they grow. They will. They will. I have a feeling they're going to be so aggressive. It's going to be like the CrossFit games <laughs> and it's going to be the survival of the fittest. So that's why I'm growing just a little bit more just in case. And only the best man is going to win or the best pumpkin. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. Shoveling this in. Make sure if you haven't seen um, the video that I'm going to post before this one, um, the third part of the tomato series, where we are six weeks out from the clones and where they are now. And it's basically um, clusters of cherry tomatoes and they're still green, but they're about to become ripe. So make sure you watch that one. And then I'm going to put a playlist together so you can watch all of the tomato videos together. Now that there's enough to do that. All right, so here we go. I've got an extra packet just in case we need them. I'm really hoping not to, um, but you just you never know. Always to be you know better on the safe side. Let me just move these. So I'm going to go ahead and spin these and adjust my lights. And get my cover. Here we go. There we go. The vents are closed. So my rule of thumb is I really like 48 hours from uh, planting in the rock wall, cover on, and vents closed. About a day and a half, two days. If you see the seeds starting to open, um, then you can go ahead and crack the vents during the day with the lights on. At night, go ahead and close the vents just to keep the moisture and keep the warmth going. Um, so again, every day, every moment, every second, matters right now because we are on a time frame. All right, day one of 120 is in the books. So now what we need to do is go upstairs and I want to share with you the couple of videos that I found that are kind of, they're comical, but I actually learned something too. So as this challenge progresses, it's also going to be, you know, like a learning experience for not only myself, but for you guys as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. Hey guys, so we're upstairs and what we're going to do now is we're going to watch three very short videos, but within these videos, they each have a message and they are going to teach me something, maybe you as well, on how to grow a pumpkin on your tower. So let's give it a whirl. I love this first guy. Think about planting pumpkins this time of the year? Don't, because by the time you've seen all the Halloween decorations in the store, it's already too late. That's right, I said it. Pumpkins need to be planted 120 days before Halloween. Okay, so we have them in the rock wall as of this morning. It is May 30th, so we'll just call it June 1st. So hopefully we will have a pumpkin by October 1. So I think we can check that box. Now let's move on. The bigger your fruit's gonna be. So always remember that too. So the bigger you can grow these plants, the bigger that fruit's gonna be. If you have a small plant and, a, and the leaves are very small and it's just you're not gonna grow a 600 pound or a 500 pound okay so let's just state this for the record the pumpkin's not going to be 500 pounds and it's not going to be 600 pounds the name of the pumpkin that i bought the seeds are called weeby little for a reason the other thing that i want to touch on that he talks about in terms of pumpkins but i think it holds true for squash and zucchini and maybe cucumbers. So I find when the plant gets very mature and the leaves are quite large, they tend to throw off better fruit that gets pollinated a little bit easier and it, it grows really fast. So there's something to this um, and I'm just gonna kind of keep my eye on it in, in the other towers, in the squash, the zucchini tower, but also with obviously with the pumpkin as well. So let's let's finish up on this one. Pumpkin. It's... This is the last one. Pay close attention to what they're doing. 
It's very, very bizarre, but it kind of makes sense because I know that if the timing is not right when you pollinate, whether it's summer squash or zucchini, it doesn't pollinate. So you kind of have to catch it at the right time. But what he's about to show is, is, is a technique, which I actually may adopt for other, um, for zucchinis and summer squash. So check this out. It's super cool. So the cloth, I think it's like a cheesecloth. Now, I don't think I would use zip ties. I might use some type of a, uh, like a string that you might tie meat together, something softer. Um, but I, I get where he's going. So he's using the stem. A lot of times what I do is I will break it open like that, but I have this paintbrush, one of my favorite ones, very soft, very concentrated. And I will scoop the pollen from that, uh, the, the male, and then I will go ahead and then kind of spread it around the female. So you can do it either way, but I, I like to kind of use the paintbrush method. Now notice what he's doing. I've never done this before. He's closing up the flower. Sometimes if, if I feel like if I didn't catch the flower right away, what I'll do is I'll kind of close it and then twist the ends so that the pollen stays in there. Now I'm indoors, so I don't have any natural breeze. So I'm assuming he's doing this because he's outdoors and there's wind. So he doesn't want the wind to go and then blow the pollen off of the female. Just, I'm just guessing. Comment down below if, if you think otherwise. And again, zip tie. <laughs> you would think it would just rip right through that flower because the the flowers are so fragile. Uh, all right. And the cheesecloth. I don't get that. But again, tower versus soil. But I just thought this was very interesting. So I'll see what the flowers look like when they develop and then maybe adopt this technique if need be. More zip ties. Okay, so these are the three videos I thought were interesting that we could potentially grab some bit of information from. We know the 120 days, that's pretty easy. But again, the, the bigger the plant, meaning the bigger the leaves, the bigger the fruit, and that really makes sense. It really, really resonates. And then the last thing was just a different technique of the self-pollination and then preserving the pollen within that female to make sure that it pollinates. So um, I have some work to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and get this out there to you guys. Be sure to comment down below if you have any other tips or tricks for me and uh, wish me luck. This is our first video and I, I'm so excited. I can't wait to do this. We'll see you in the next video, which will be planting the seeds in the tower. That will be um, the video number two. So here we go. Have a great day, everybody, and thanks for watching.